Hi, everybody. Uh, we're so happy that you're interested in design thinking. Um, if you've not heard of design thinking before, that's why we're here. So this is our design thinking team, or at least a portion of it. And we decided to kind of go into a rebranding session. We started out this last year with two different cohorts, Raising Blended Learning and Project-Based Learning. And that work was led by me, Jen Maestas, and Dr. Carol Harrell, and Matt Singleton um, from UTSA. Oh, and Javi. And Javi. Javi. And this is Tim Bishop back Yay. here. Hello. And then we spent a whole year doing some active research and thinking through what blended learning was and what project-based learning was. And then we had the opportunity to travel to Chicago to a design thinking conference. And we had a few epiphanies there. And one of the epiphanies that we had was that what we're really engaging in is designing experiences um, for our end user, which in this case are teachers and students. And so when we put that frame around our work, we discovered that we collectively, this team, are designing experiences for teachers and the teachers are in turn designing experiences for students. And when we put our magic together, um, really great things happen. We had a really fun time this year designing both the teacher experiences and the student experiences. And we're here to tell you a little bit about that work. Um, hopefully with the intent of getting you so interested that you decide to join one of our cohorts. Um, so we're gonna kick you off, kick off with a quote that we really want you to think about. So I'm gonna give you a second to read that. We first saw this in Chicago and we were all a little wowed by it. Mm -hmm. um, so who wants to give a, a reflection real quick? Well, my first wow was I thought, oh, well, I won't be here. So it was a, it was a downer wow. It was a downer wow. But the more I thought about it, I'm, it gave a lot of credence to the work we're doing with RBL and PBL um, because the skills that the teachers and our industry partners and our community leaders and the experts that we have had um, involved in this process um, have made it more about those enduring skills and um, or skill sets that kids need, like effective communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creative thinking, all of those. And those have been timeless. And what kind of opportunities that students have in schools with teachers as their guides um, to to really hone in on those and so much so that they're confident in whatever they they want to pursue afterwards. Um, you guys had some comments too. Yeah, it made me uh, it made me kind of think about you know the technology aspect of things. You know, right now we're uh, at, at this insane level of technology compared mm -hmm. to what we were when I was a kid, even in mm -hmm. high school. And um, you know, it's progressing you know faster and faster and faster all the time. And um, you know, when I stop and think about myself as a teacher all of the content that I could teach is completely available on Google and probably taught, honestly, <laughs> exactly. a little bit better than what I'm doing as of right now. But to your to your comment, uh, Carol, you know, how do the, how does a kid apply it? Right. How does someone apply it effectively and critically mm -hmm. and in um, multiple different facets and different uh, professions? They need somebody that's been there, that's done that. And that's where we come in. And that's where the experience is important versus well, now I'm just the keeper of the information. Mm -hmm. It does, it shifts our role uh, almost uh, in 180 degrees. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be nuts. And we, we don't know what jobs mm -mm. are. Exactly. We don't know what we don't know is going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, we got to get them, we got to get kids critical and ready to pass on those critical thinking skills. Yeah. Um, Mine was the uh, social and cultural dynamics are going to be mm -hmm. like totally different. And yeah. will our, our teachers be prepared? You know, mm -hmm. to meet the demands of those changes. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, I'll add in there that um, when when I hear this and when I hear what you all have said, I hear that we have an urgent need in education to innovate and and to push our work for our students and understand what our students need. And I think Cast, uh, your network has done such a great job of. Of trying to prioritize that and, and trying to uplift student voice and and uh, understand what they need 
And this project is an opportunity where we're inviting the people who should lead that work, teachers, to lead and in innovating um, for their students. And I think that that's really powerful and urgent. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And so we created two co cohorts. Um, the first one is called Raising Blended Learners. This is a ninth grade teacher cohort. So if you are teaching ninth grade anywhere across our network and want to join in, this is your moment to do that. Um, this cohort is run in partnership with the Urban Education Institute at UTSA, which is why Matt is here. Um, Matt plays a critical role in helping us design research opportunities and gather data and then be really strategic about our analysis of that data. And we're super proud to be part um, in partnership with UTSA. And as a benefit of joining the RBL cohort, you're actually named UTSA fellows. And so you'll have a little bit of um, distinguished, uh, <laughs> I know, esteem um, amongst your education peers because wow. you're actually named a, a UEI fellow. There's a $2,000 stipend attached to this work. Um, and it's because we love you, but it's also because there's like 45 hours of additional work that we're asking you to engage in. We meet over the course of a school year, mostly in the evenings, but we're going to shoot for some in person during the day sessions if we can swing substitutes. This year that was really hard because there was a huge substitute shortage and so we didn't do that, um, but we're, we're going to try again this year if, if we can. Really what we're doing in this cohort is taking what we practice in our classrooms and we're, we're moving from the theory that we learn to the practice and back again. And we're doing that while engaging in blended learning strategies. Um, blended learning is really the focus of the grant. We're thinking about how to leverage the technology that we have access to with both our students and in our teaching um, to garner time to do some extensive planning and also to just improve student outcomes. Um, we really think that this is that agency is the student outcome we are most focused on. We want obviously good academic outcomes, but beyond that, we, we really want to ensure that our students are well prepared for life. And this goes just beyond grit. So this is um, the ability to really address issues uh, around identity, around race, that grit alone doesn't solve for. And that's why we believe that agency is so important. So did I miss anything about what RBL is? I I, as a teacher, I just want to go ahead and say, you know, to address a couple of quick things. Um, yes, it's a lot of work, but they do a great job taking care of us. It's engaging. Um, I don't feel like um, even though, you know, yeah, we've given up a couple of Fridays or a couple of Saturdays, um, you know, it's been family friendly and um, I don't feel like I've sacrificed time because I'm taking things with me every single time I go. Um, so if you do attend, you are going to get something out of this. Um, it's it's very worthwhile the work that that we've been putting together, um, and uh, the agency piece. I can say that implementing these strategies and and um, concepts into I'm, I'm gonna call them concepts. It's not really so much a strategy as a mm -hmm. concept and a philosophical shift. Um, I've seen a major change in my uh, in my freshmen from beginning of year to end of year as far as their ability to access uh, information for themselves and also advocate for themselves in a way that we feel is you know, that we would say is healthy and productive, um, mm -hmm. you know, less of the, the behavioral, um, you know, snafus from not knowing how to talk to a teacher, right, which is uh, the thing that, you know, we, we oftentimes get caught up in is seeing yeah. the fruits of the, um, the upset or the lack of knowledge versus now we're treating the root. And um, it, it's been, it's been a, an incredible year. And I give a lot of that to blended learning. Sweet, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I oh, want to speak ahead, to that. So yeah. my, I personally enjoyed the development of the tools that were you know, used and implemented, not only to deliver the strategies that Tim just mentioned, but also uh, how to evaluate the effectiveness of those tools and strategies for building agency. Okay. Yeah, all, all we're doing in our blended learning project is we're giving teachers the space the time and a system and some tools to improve how they implement what we know works. Um, we know these blended learning strategies have, have potential to, to 
do the innovation we need in education, to do the kinds of things we need um, for our students. It's a matter of how do we make them work in our actual classrooms? And the best people to answer that question um, are our teachers. And so what, what we do at our RBL gatherings is just give you the structure and the space to work through that. And um, all of these tools that, that Javi is talking about and, and, the, and the things that people like him have developed um, are completely developed by teachers in your network and um, for their real classrooms. And, and that's the opportunity that you have when you join our RBL team. It's to have some time, space, and, and wonderfully some compensation as well to, to do the work that's needed um, of innovation. And that brings us to our second cohort that uh, Dr. Harl runs. So um, what's been wonderful um, having two co co cohorts going on at the same time and having members, a uh, couple members in both is we really start seeing how um, PBL envelops and embraces uh, RBL and, and really going back to what Matthew was saying, um, giving teachers space, time, encouragement, support. Um, in, in the case of our PBL roadmap, it is really now creating a system. Mm -hmm. Everyone was kind of bringing um, like pieces of a quilt to our, our Saturday sessions, but now it's coming together on a roadmap that will um, support teachers in the classroom and, and in their schools. And so, um, the cohort it consists of ninth through 12th grade teachers all subject matters um, this year we have math science art cte um, uh, english. english sorry <laughs> english we have a couple of administrators um, so we have everybody um, we have someone from every school which is really neat we also added a student version of the adult version that meets in the summer and again we're going to encourage you to invite your your students to sign up for um, the PBL Posse is what they named themselves last year, and then also encourage this next cohort to form a PBL Posse student Posse at their own uh, campus so students are now part of not just the development of a PBL, um, but owning the process along the way as well, and so um, we. Um, even had a session today where we love to meet at SAMA, the San Antonio Museum of Art. Um, we've met at the museum and a couple other places, but we really take the learning seriously when we're in here. So the roadmap now will be an interactive roadmap. It'll um, go onto a, a web page. Um, there'll be a way for students to um, actualize their process and record it in Bulb or, or whatever another campus uses. Bulb's an electronic portfolio system, but really honoring that this is a process. It's not just about an end product or an end project, which helps teachers understand that and students that this is really a journey. This is a road from launch mm -hmm. to legacy and that what they do will impact the world. And so um, that's the cast version of it. And we welcome you to join us in that capacity. Again, we meet Saturday mornings, but we've also decided as a team to say, oh, let's try Thursday afternoon. So no, there will be some flexibility that way. And then it ends in May, but we're also looking at um, some of the cohort helping us with training in the summer for new teachers. So lots of opportunities around project uh, uh, PBL, um, moving from project-based learning to process-based learning. Did I capture the stipend? Yes, Saturday session. Okay, good, we're good. <laughs> um, did y'all want to add anything? Because you've been in both. You want to go first? Or I, just the brain power that's in this room, you know, when we come collective together. Collective intelligence, just, Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, it's just amazing what we're producing. And again, it's all about the process. And so it does take time. And that's time is something that we need, um, not only when we meet as a collaborative, but even on our campuses um, and something that we advocate. Yeah. Um, and being in the classroom, you know, the, the thing is, I've always I've always pushed for for project based learning. Now we're going to process based learning, which mm -hmm. is going to be a lot more involved and a lot more student centered, which is amazing. 
And I, I know the, the, the first thing that I thought of from the skeptics part of my brain is, is, well, how in the heck am I going to be able to do this and still teach my content? Well, uh -huh, that's where the benefit of me being in both is coming in because now blended learning is becoming a vehicle for me to meet students where they are individually without completely you know, wrecking or uh, abandoning the idea of process-based learning when you know, our calendars start to get really tight. Right. And so again, you know, I, I'd have signed up for both of these, you know, without the stipend because a they're in cool locations and b because I, it's making it's making the life of myself and my students better because we're doing good work. Yeah. But man, they they uh, you know they've taken care of us uh, as teachers. They're they're and they're giving us again uh, concepts and philosophies and ideas on how we can blend the big with the small and meet everywhere in between without you know, running afoul of, you know, those, those due dates that we all get mm -hmm. super scared of, of missing. Um, I really feel like, you know, this is now, instead of a juggling act, this is a balancing act with props set up on either end. And uh, I, I thank both of these teams that you guys have put together. Um, you know, again, all my cynic, you know, all my skeptic teachers, like, please, show up <laughs> buy in you will you will love it right this is very much a yes and kind of group and and it's going to pay off big time i just i you just made me think too i know jen um and matthew mentioned this you know ultimate goal is student agency right mm -hmm. we we all want that and you know if this was a big hug it would be a mm -hmm. student hugging both of these right and embracing mm -hmm. it but the teacher agency that exactly. sometimes doesn't have a a, a space um, just because we're so busy being teachers now has a place in a space mm -hmm. and also once teachers have agency they'll make things happen, you know that so we encourage you if you you kind of felt like there wasn't a place for you or a mm -hmm. space for you there there is and it's not that any campus is doing anything in a negative way it's we're the business of teaching kids during the day so right. we know that so. Think about it that way. Um, and then Matt, you're smiling a big <laughs> smile. What were you gonna add? <laughs> no, I, I think Carol is absolutely right on it. Um, what's special about both of these approaches and these two things happening together in the CAS network is that it, it is putting teachers in the driver's seat, giving you space to take these things we know work project-based learning. We know what this does for students. We know what having authentic products and, and authentic practices that, that actually mean something in their world. We know that that helps students, especially our most vulnerable students. And we know that blended learning strategies can help us do these things and get this work done. And now you have a time and space carved out and you're being compensated um, so that you can figure out how to implement these things and make them come to life in your classroom. And that is powerful. And um, that's why Urban Ed, at Urban Education Institute, we're so happy to partner with CAS schools and CAS teachers, because you guys do have a place where that's not only something that's talked about as a desire, but they've really put some work to put some resources um, and practices uh, in place to help you do that. And that's really, really powerful. And we are super excited about it. And this year, we're going to do something a little bit different in that we're going to try to bookend the experience collectively. So this is our first step. We're in a virtual session. Um, we have an interest survey. If you are interested in joining uh, either one of these cohorts, we're going to give you a QR code in a second. And we'd like for you to fill that out by May 6th. And then we'll make our selections and we'll notify you via email. And then we're going to have one giant kickoff happy hour with both cohorts. Um, we're super excited about that. And then after the kickoff cohort, we'll kind of branch out into our teams. And you'll notice that we put an IBL team there um, down at the bottom. And we haven't really mentioned IBL too much, but it is something that we are working on and thinking through. And so we'll send out more information on, um, on that at a later date, but it's another way of designing student experiences that we will continue to, to think on. And then at the very end of both cohorts, we'll come back together and we'll have one giant learning showcase in May of 2023, which we are also very excited about. Yay. So what we wanna leave you with is that these two cohorts 
um, really get at the soul of everything that we do. And they're designed to create collaboration. We are a network of six high schools over four school districts. And so we don't have the opportunity as often as we'd like to come together as a true network. And this is one of those places where you're going to meet people from all of the high schools. We rely on collective intelligence, which Carol alluded to earlier. We really believe that any job is too, too big for just one person, but no job is too big for a collective. Yeah. And so we, we really encourage you to join us. Um, and that's the QR code. So please take time to fill out our interest survey, share it with a friend, um, and we hope to see you soon. Yay. Oh, you can reach out to us if you have questions. Yes. Um, my email is jmiestis at castschools.com. Mine is charl at castschools.com. Mine is jdehoyos2 at siisd.net. Timothy.bishop at ecisd.net. And I'm Matthew.singleton at utsa.edu. We cannot wait to see you guys. See you Yay. soon. I'm doing my interest survey. Thank oh, you. Doing your interest <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bye. Bye. I love it. <laughs>